All right, chefs, we're gonna make two different bread recipes today. Uh, I'm gonna make one that I, that I make at home when I'm, when I'm eating gluten, um, but uh, it is a, um, a no need bread. We're gonna make it in this container right here. I've already pre-measured. It's six and a half cups of uh, flour. And then I'm gonna make a, like a normal, I just did a Google search and took the very first one that showed up. And I've got three and a quarter cups of flour here. So this is my mise en place. I've got the equipment I'm gonna need, some spoons, got everything that I need right here. I've got salt, olive oil, yeast, my two flours, I've got water, and I've got some extra flour for later on when I'm kneading. The uh, no knead recipe calls for three and a half cups, and this is a four cup. You take tap water, just turn on the hot water, and when it starts to get warm, that's when you start uh, filling up your, your measuring cup. All right. It's actually three cups. So I've got three cups of uh, warm water. I'm gonna take one tablespoon of yeast. I like to go a little heavy on the yeast. Move this out of the way. So that is our water. We're gonna take, we're gonna do a half a tablespoon of salt, kosher salt. You wanna pre-mix this. Try to keep it in the container so you don't have a mess to clean up. We're gonna pour our water in and we're gonna start with using a spatula to stir. So this is a bread that you can mix and you can put it in your refrigerator. It's nice because it will start to sour like a sourdough as it, uh, as it ages. Okay, you, you'll get to a point where you're gonna need to use your hands. And I would suggest using either uh, some oil on your hands or use gloves. And I am using gloves today. So you're gonna to wanna to get in here and get your hands dirty. Get the, uh, the bits of flour that kind of stick in the corners of the container. Uh, the good thing about using a container like this, you can do this in a bowl and then put it into a container, but you're gonna have some rise. So you wanna make sure that you put it in a container that will handle the rise. This will last up to four or five days and it will just taste better and better. All right, so just mix it up until it's completely mixed up and you don't have any dry left in it. All right, so we're gonna do our other one here. Uh, this is a printed recipe. So it's three, three and a quarter cups of bread flour, but this is all purpose flour. Uh, we're gonna do two teaspoons of yeast. Same thing, we're gonna mix this in this bowl. Two teaspoons of kosher salt. Please don't use iodized. Use kosher or sea salt. Okay, we're gonna mix this up. You don't have to sift, but you can sift if you want. Just mix the dry ingredients. And then we're gonna do one and a half cups. It says cool water but I'm gonna use the same water. One and a half cups of water. I'm gonna use my hands on this one. I'm gonna show you the, the dough here in a minute. 
that this is where, at this point, you can either knead inside the bowl or you can put it on the table. I'm gonna knead inside the bowl so we don't mess up any more than we have to. These bowls are inexpensive. You can get these anywhere. You can completely mix this on a counter or on a big cutting board. Take your, your dough with your fist and just push it. You'll know when it's ready because it will become, as you're doing this, it kind of warms it up too, which starts developing the yeast. Take it and punch it with your fist. Kind of push it, rolling it over and pushing. I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can use this bread, both recipes. Uh, bread recipes are not just for bread. They can be for pizza crust as well. There's a few other things you can do. So you can see how it's starting to become smooth or smoother, and that's it. All right, so now, bowl's clean, clean-ish. Take some of your olive oil, rub the bowl, because we're gonna let this rise and we don't want it to stick. You wanna get it, it's gonna rise pretty good, so you wanna make sure that you get all the way around it. It sticks a little, it's fine, but it helps. It helps to have uh, some oil on the bowl. All right, so these are the two doughs that we have. One of these, this one is gonna go in the refrigerator and this one is gonna sit on the table and rise on the table. So I'm gonna take the no need, put it in the refrigerator. We're gonna leave this one here to rise. All right, it's been two hours. Uh, I wanna show you this. I actually left this no need bread on the uh, table here. It's kind of cool in the kitchen. It's about 73 degrees, so uh, it's not real warm. So I left this on, on the table, I left them both. And you can see that actually the recipe that I have, the no need is, has risen really, really well. You can see the texture of it. You see the bubbles in it. This is the yeast doing its work. It's eating the sugars in the flour. Same thing's happening over here, but with the recipe, with the amount of water, there's a couple different factors to this. Um, it is not rising quite as well, but that's fine. It's still gonna, it's still gonna do good. So at this point, a couple hours, we're gonna punch it down. We're gonna punch all the air bubbles out of it. Kind of fold it over. It's really warm. Um, being mindful of your food, I want to tell you that it's really warm. It is starting to um, become kind of soft and stretchy. It smells like fermenting uh, bread it is exactly what it smells like. You can punch it down and leave it alone. That's fine. You can play with your food, which is what I like to do a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on a second glove. Um, a good thing to do is just to kind of fold it under. So we're gonna fold this under and um, after we punch it, you can see that the air bubbles are gone now. Um, but if you watch this, if I put a time lapse on this, you'll start to see those bubbles happening again. I'm gonna do the same to this. I'm gonna punch it down. In the refrigerator, you're still gonna wanna, when you come back to use this, you're gonna wanna punch it down. Um, you wanna get that second rise because you want it to um, eat as much of the, the uh, glucose or the sugar in the flour, the carb, um, as possible. When you do this one that you're gonna have in the refrigerator, <clears throat> do it the first time, put it back in the refrigerator, and then when you want to use it, all you'll do is you'll punch it down and I'll show you later what you do, but you punch it down, you form it, put it on your uh, tray and you're going to let it rise again. Um, I like to let it rise three times. Uh, that way it becomes nice and airy. 
you could do it two times. It doesn't get quite as airy. You don't get the development of the gluten quite as well, but that's it. And I'm gonna bring you back here in another hour. We're gonna let this go for an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, and then uh, we're gonna form some bread and let it go again, let it rise again. Put your plastic wrap back on. And your lid. You might wanna leave the corner of this lid off so it has uh, a place for the uh, air to escape, but you wanna cover it so nothing gets in it. You don't wanna have any uh, foreign objects in your bread. So we're back, we've got our dough. Could somebody order me some smaller gloves? All right, so I'm gonna cook both of these. We're gonna do this on the same sheet tray because they're gonna be basically the same uh, uh, temperature in the same time. So I am going to punch down, this is the no need. We're gonna do eight ounces of dough. So you're gonna take this A little bit of flour and then this is where you're gonna we're gonna fold it under you're gonna kind of take your hand underneath one hand underneath and kind of pull it and keep pulling it until it has sealed itself and then we're gonna put it on the uh, the sheet tray I'm gonna do so that's a bull which in uh, layman French terms means um, a ball, basically a ball of dough. At this point, flour is your friend. You wanna use flour to kind of keep it from sticking to you and sticking to itself, but you just, you know, kind of take it underneath like that to where that is a solid piece. All right, so we're gonna do two of those and then I'm gonna, we're gonna do like a baguette shape. Same thing, we're gonna we're gonna roll it under, but then we're going to start shaping it. You do it on your table or on a cutting board, and you just kind of go from the center out. Real bakers can get this done really fast. And a lot of places have machinery to do this. All right, good to go. Now let's take our other dough. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do, this one's really warm. Just start stretching it out. area clean. If you want to get frisky, you could, uh, you can toss this if you like. Just roll it out. So yeah, see, this is pizza dough. Pizza dough bread. Woohoo! What's up, Mr. Marshall? I was just coming to see what was for lunch, coach. Hi, chef. There you go, pizza dough. Mr. Marshall is taking pictures of me. We're gonna cook this separate because we can go ahead and cook this one. We'll just pretend like we have some, uh, some toppings on it. There's a pizza sauce over there. Put some olive oil. You know what, let's do garlic bread. We're gonna put olive oil on it. All right, so we've got olive oil on this. We're gonna do some salt. 
and some garlic powder. You can use fresh if you want. I'm gonna put the red pepper so we have a little spice. It'll add a little bit to it, that third dimension. And we'll brush it with some olive oil afterwards. And then we're going to put this in the oven 350 for about 10 minutes. He said I forgot to bring my lunch. I am going to go and call the chef. So this is our pizza crust. We're gonna make a little plate for Mr. Marshall. There you go. It's kind of your hero plate. Gonna drizzle. There you go. Mr. Marshall has lunch. All right, so we've got our bread. It's been uh, sitting here while I've been in class. Wish I had a brush, but I don't. But we're gonna put some olive oil. On this one, I'm gonna show you the difference. So this other one, we're not gonna put any oil on. And I'm gonna put some oil here too. Just be very kind of careful with it. You don't wanna push down on it because then you'll flatten it and you'll have to let it rise again. That's why it's easier with a brush. Um, we're gonna leave this one alone too. I might put water. Uh, you're going to want to cut it so it lets the steam out. And you're going to be able to see the difference in the different bread as it bakes. Let's do this. Let's put a little flour on these. That's going to add some color. I'm gonna get a pan of water to put in the oven um, to simulate a steaming oven. You wanna add water, especially for a baguette, uh, because a baguette needs that, that moisture. Let's see if I can find something to put it in. So I've got my pan of water. We're gonna go in the bottom like that. Okay, I'm gonna close it up for about five minutes. I'm gonna go in this middle rack because we have about uh, six inches of height here. I don't wanna put it in here because it's a little short and the, uh, it might rise enough to, uh, to hit the rack above. So make sure it has enough room inside the uh, oven. All right, timer's off. That was 20 minutes. Ooh, beautiful bread. think looks good how can you tell if bread is is done oh put my finger through that um 200 degrees bread will reach 200 degrees when it's properly cooked properly developed There we go, 200 degrees. Okay, let's take a look at this one here. It's kind of hot, but 
Look at that. That is a nice developed bread. This here is the no need. Woo. Similar on the inside. Uh, so this one is the no need and this one is the other recipe. So both very nice. Um, you take your pick, they're both very good to eat. Bread Baking 101, two different recipes, two different ways to do it.